Uh, yeah, just continuing my short videos on pack testing, uh, just to give people an idea into what happens. Now, today it's a 10 metre extension lead, so as with the toaster, you have to do a visual inspection of the cable, so you have to, have to unravel the whole reel, even on cables I get some as big as 40 metres, so a bit of a pain unrolling that amount, but to do the job properly, you do have to unroll the full 40 metres to do that visual inspection. And you'd also do a bit of an inspection around the socket areas, make sure there's no cracks or nothing in there. As you'll see, this socket uh, extension lead does have surge protection, so this test is done at 500 volts, so there's a possibility that that may trip. Doesn't always, quite often, you do get away with it. So just uh, get this camera to focus, does it seem to light the, the light of the pack tester? see in the uh, right hand bottom corner showing you that it's testing at 500 volts. Now should this cause the uh, extension lead surge protection to trip then on this tester you have a handy feature at the press of a button you can drop the test voltage down to 250 volts. There's a lot of testers that don't have that feature. So we'll try it on the full 500 volts and we'll see what happens. Press the lead button and as with the toaster, it does the earth uh, continuity test first. Now what I've done on this, I've actually intentionally turned the, uh, the pass level down on this tester. Another feature that a lot of testers don't have where you can alter the test. I've done this to prove the point. Most things are tested, the pack testers are set thinking you won't be testing anything longer than 10 metres long. And on the whole, you're normally not. So that's failing at 0 0.18 ohms. Now with an app I have on my phone that you can actually put the length of a cable in and the diameter of the, the cable, it will tell you what an acceptable pass level is. Now going by that app, that actually tells me on this extension lead, as high as 0 0.29 ohms would actually be acceptable. So what we can now do on this one, well, I brought that test, come out of there, I can go into the pass levels on the tester and I can scroll down to the extension lead which is at the bottom, as you can see at the moment it's set to 0 0.1 Now we're higher on that, so what I can actually do now is click on that one Now I know it will be under 2 ohms, so I'll just put it to 2 ohms, but say actually 2.1 nine I think it was was acceptable so I could put it up to three just to come within that but I know it's actually going to be lower than two so I can just click on that now and come back out now we run this test again we'll see what happens I think it was 1.8 before I think it was Now we've passed because we've got it set to 0 0.2 ohms, so that has now allowed that to pass. Insulation has given the maximum reading on that. It's now doing the uh, polarity, so this extension lead is in very good condition. Because say that earth continuity could be as high as 0 0.29, so that's well within range. The insulation has given a perfect score on the insulation test. And the polarity is basically, it's checking the plugs wide up, i.e. live neutral and earth are in the correct pins. So, and another thing I can do on this one, you have the option to save these past results. So I save that. It's now just saying it's going to put it into memory spot 003. I'll just click OK on that. Now it might be if I don't want to be messing about scribbling all these results down at the time, I could do that and then sort of do that at another point when I'm when I'm back home basically. Now I'll just show you something else while we're at it. Um, something we're all very familiar with. Uh, phone charger. Now this would be classed um, 
as a class 2 item, i.e. it doesn't have an extension lead, uh, extension lead, sorry, it doesn't have an earth wire. Now if you look at that little square box within a box, just in the centre there, if you look on any appliance and you see that symbol, then that's basically telling you it's a class 2 item, there's no earth wire in there. So, we'll just uh, plug this one in. camera a second to focus. Now, with this one we have a class 2 button. Now, this is basically, as you can see, it's on the left hand corner, it's got fuse OK, question mark, switched on, question mark. Because that is something that's very low powered. It hasn't got an, it's an actual cable to run down like the extension lead has and there's no real kind of heavy duty circuitry in there. So the test is basically seen as like that power that went to send into it basically virtually didn't move because so there's no cable to go down, there's no heavy circuitry, it's not a big heavy duty item. So all the tester is doing now is asking you is that reading it's just got possibly because the fuse has blown or have you forgot to switch it on before you've done the test so I know everything's okay and it's only done this because of the type of item it is so I can come down tell it to continue the test basically saying yeah the fuse is okay and it is switched on now it's doing the insulation and you'll see on that it's only two items on there it hasn't got the earth continuity because Pressing the class 2 button is you telling it it doesn't have an earth wire. So, so some of the features on this, and again I can save that result. And if I go into the menu, if I've not been marking all these down on the job, I wanted to do that when I get back home. I can go into the memory, scroll down, and uh, recall. And there we have the last test it's done. It starts at the last one you've done. So it's basically tell you with a class 2. You've told it to skip the fuse. And you've got the reading. Uh, come down. That was the lead test that we did. A couple of lead tests on there. And the class 1 item. So if you did it like this. Put it in the memory. You'd still have to jot down on a bit of paper. What the item was. So it saves a little bit of time. So this, uh, this tester, I've not had this one very long actually, just only very recently bought it, but um, on the whole I'm thinking it's a very good one, it's got a lot more features than my previous tester, I so say it's a nice compact size, it's it's not massive, it's easy to carry around, it's not a big bulky thing, and some of the features on it like that, same a previous tester, you couldn't alter the the pass levels, so if it was something over 10 metres then that caused a bit of a problem figuring out whether it was okay or not, it was a case of using multimeters and generally messing about. So you'll find a lot of other testers that are considerably bulkier than that one that are quite cumbersome to carry around a site and actually don't have the features of this one. So anyway, just another short video giving you a little bit of an insight into it. I can pop this on the video for people to view. But, catch you all later.